Hi, Dr. Ron Eaglin here at Daytona State College, and uh, this video is uh, for my data structures class. I actually have a number of classes that use JS Fiddle um, quite a bit during the course of uh, their programming. So, uh, one of the reasons is why do we use JS Fiddle, and we're also going to answer some questions of how do you use JS Fiddle. Well, first, the reason why I use JS Fiddle, it's a great tool for writing JavaScript. One of the main reasons why I like to use JS Fiddle is that, one, it makes it easy for me to look at your code. Great, I can see your code, I can see results, I can see your output. But really, the reality is it's a very easy to use tool for writing JavaScript and getting quick results. So first, I'm going to go over the JS Fiddle environment. This is JS Fiddle, and if you look up here, jsfiddle.net, I am logged in, so you see the R Eaglin is in the URL up here, and then this is the specific fiddle and the version that I'm working on. So that URL tells you a lot. You're in jsfiddle.net, your account name, and then there's usually an ID assigned to each fiddle, and then a version number. If I go back in the version, I actually can change that and go back a version number just by changing that, and it'll actually go backwards to a different version. Now, the latest version, I deleted everything, so I'm going to start fresh. And you just saw me do that. That's pretty easy to do. So, what, what tools do we have here? Well, for one, I usually keep five windows available to you. The HTML window right here, the JavaScript window right here, a CSS window for if I want to do any styling, and then my output window, which is right now very tiny, and then over here, I've actually got the console for any messages that I want uh, that I get from the programming itself. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't. I want to start scratch. And let's do something here. Let's actually use this. Now, there's some other pieces of this too. One is you should give all your fiddles a title because they're going to be saved and a description. There are some resources available to you. In other words, you can use libraries in your JavaScript, I use jQuery all the time, and those will actually show up. You can actually put the CDN, and if you don't know what CDN is, don't worry about it right now, but you can put the CDN of those resources into here, and they will be available to you. So that's kind of some neat stuff that you've got available. I've got this Run button, which allows me to tell it to go ahead, basically, just like loading a web page, run it. Um, I can save the fiddle that saves it into my, um, that actually saves it into my library of fiddles. I have a massive library of fiddles. And I can do other things like set as base. So if I have a multiple version that I want to set back to the base fiddle, that say, hey, I don't want to go back to those old versions, I can do that. And then I have some tools, some standard programming tools like forking, which basically says I'm going to take this fiddle and I'm going to go in a different direction with it but I'm still going to maintain that base right over here that I have. I also have the ability to embed it in web pages. And I also up here, there's some things you can do the URL that are pretty neat too that you'll see later on in the class that I do. So, so let's do something. Let's actually create some, um, let's create a really, really, really easy program. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div. And watch this. If I go div and close that, I've now got a div there. I need to give it um, ID equals, I'm going to give my div an out, uh, ID, and this is part of the document object metal. A, dot, a div is an object on a web page, and by giving it ID, I can then reference it. So the ID will be output, and I think that's pretty much all of that I need here. Now, um, I'm also going to create a button. Well, let's first do this. Let's come down here into the JavaScript, and let's um, add some JavaScript. Document get element by ID and the element that I've got on the web page is output. That's an element that is an element that div that I created is an element on the on the web page and I'm going to set the inner HTML equal to my name. Semicolon. Now if I run this, it's going to do Nothing other, well, that actually, I run this, you can see I've got that output right there. So it actually executed that output. Great. Well, most of the time what you're going to do is you're going to want to trigger these things to actually occur. So let's create a button. Now, there's a lot of ways to create a button. I can use the button um, HTML tag, but really to use proper HTML5, I'm going to make it an input um, type equals 
button. And I've got some attributes. One is on click. Well, I can't do anything with the on click yet because I don't have anything for the on click to do, but I can put the value equals click me. Okay, and um, I'm going to close that up. And if I run this, I've got a click me button right there, and it doesn't do anything because I haven't told it to do anything. When I just, I'm, I'm going to deal with a little bit here with events. Events are kind of cool. Well, having this document get element my ID output equals inner HTML equals Ron, well, that's great because it actually has the div there. It executes that. It goes to the document. It finds the uh, method get element ID. It identifies the output div that I've got there. And it sets the inner HTML equal to that. Those inner HTML and get element I by ID are both built in methods of the document object, which is one of the objects built into the browser. The div right here is something you created. It's, it's also in the browser. It's an element that I can retrieve by ID. So um, what I could do is I can say on here in this input, I can go one further. I can say on click equals um, on click. Let's do this. Let's let's run a piece of code. Let's change the output. So let's say document dot get element by ID. Okay, the output is that element. Okay, so we've got that. And notice here, I've got a little issue with the brackets. So I'm going to have to use single quotes for this one because I have double quotes on the outside. Outside dot inner HTML equals, and I'm going to have to use single brackets again. And I'll put my last name. So now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run it, and I'm going to click this. And I notice that I got something in the console that says uncut reference doc um eptim. In other words, I spelled it wrong. And if I come up here, I say document. Well, it has to be spelled right because we're programming. If it's not spelled right, it doesn't exist. Now I'll do this again. I'll click it. And notice that it changed that to Eaglin. So what I did, I created a fiddle. I used the HTML portion for the HTML. I created a button and a div on there. I created some JavaScript down here that got executed where I set the inner HTML of this div equal to my first name. And then on the uh, input type, I actually made, um, I made an input type of button with a value of click me, which is that text that's inside there. And on the click, I executed another piece of JavaScript. Well, one of the things I don't like to do is put JavaScript up into here. So I'm going to go one further. I'm going to say function, change name. And in that function, I'm going to take this chunk of code that I got right here, and I'm going to put it down here inside the function. And this down click is now blank, but you know what? I'm going to call the function that I created because I like to keep the JavaScript down there. Now, technically, the call function call is also that. But now if I click this again, it calls the function, which changes the name to my last name. That is a really quick example of, of JavaScript, JS Fiddle. And what I want you to note up here is that, see the version number actually changed to 11. If I click Save, okay, it changed it to 12. If I set it to Base, that just went away. And now those numbers, if I start making changes, will actually start incrementing again. So um, it's keeping track of the versions of the fiddle that I have, so you can always go back and fix something if you need to. So in other words, if I needed to fix something, I could potentially, let's see if I can, I haven't tried this, go back to version 11. I'll look, there it is. But, um, you know, hey, if I take that 11 away, I'm going to go back to the latest base version, which is this one right here. So a lot of features in JS Fiddle. Hopefully this is very useful you, to you to getting started. Do this properly. The HTML goes here, the JavaScript goes here, the CSS goes here. I don't want to see JavaScript up to the HTML. Sure, I can, I can go ahead and throw in script tags. It'll work. But use the fiddle the way that it's meant to be used. All right, that's it. Hopefully this gets you started. Thanks.